get started on this uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for coming out uh, to this session on uh, presenting media in Drupal. Uh, my name is Travis Tidwell, and I've been developing with the Drupal community now for probably about five years. Um, I am currently uh, one of the lead developers at allplayers.com, and uh, All Players is a uh, group management uh, software. We basically uh, have a piece of software that bridges the communication gap between the home and what the home wants to participate in. So uh, that could just be a number of things, and so if you guys want to go out and check that out, I encourage you to do so. We're going to be coming out of beta here pretty soon, so we're really proud of the software we created. Um, that's what I do in the full t uh, as a full-time job. On the, uh, in the evenings, I have what my wife considers an unhealthy obsession with uh, developing multimedia uh, experiences for just anybody who wants to build a website. It's something that I've been really passionate about for a really long time. And every now and then I'll have a, a, a customer come to me that wants something customized. And uh, I typically do that under the Alathia name, which is the name that you see there on the bottom left. So if you guys need any um, commercial support or any help, that's the company you go to. So today I'm going to be uh, talking about presenting media in Drupal. This is kind of one of those topics that, you know, the web has been around for a really long time, but I almost feel like this is something that we just, the web technology has not quite grasped grasped, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> hasn't quite got yet. Um, there's a lot of really uh, inconsistencies in the current industry that makes it really difficult if you're a developer, if you're someone trying to implement multimedia in your site, it makes it really difficult for you to actually dive in. So that's what this uh, presentation is about and how to do that within Drupal. It would probably help if I selected my presentation. So uh, just to kind of give you an overview of the agenda that I'm going to be going over, uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is just uh, media management. I'm just going to very briefly talk about how you can manage your media in your Drupal site. Um, the majority is going to be talking about media presentation. I'm also going to talk a little bit about HTML5. It's, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that big movement coming into play, which is, uh, allows for native video and audio support within browsers. It's really exciting, but it's also extremely frustrating at the same time, which I'm also going to explain. And then um, I'm going to give a demo, because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those people where I, I, just, want you to, I just want to see the person show me how it works. And so... What I'm going to do is walk you through it. I'm going to walk you through how you would actually implement media into your site and show you how, really, how simple it really is given the right tools. So you're here because you want to integrate media. At least I assume that's why you're here. Or at least you're maybe interested in, in doing it. You want to prevent, uh, present videos to your users. You want to present audio maybe to your users. And so you're, you are interested in wanting to integrate media. Well, if that's you, there's really two things that you need to worry about. The first one is, how do you want to manage your media on, the, on your website? This in itself could take an entire presentation. In fact, it could probably take an entire conference to explain the numerous ways that you can go about trying to manage your media in the back end. I'm going to cover just a very few of the most popular ones today and give you some suggestions on some modules. But the primary focus that I'm going to concentrate on is the second bullet point, which is how do you want to present your media, which I personally feel is just as important, but it's something that's very neglected out on the Internet. You go to these really popular websites, and you see that they're just embedding the YouTube player. Um, they have very inconsistent user interface whenever it comes to your multimedia, whenever really it's extremely important to have that consistent user interface whenever you want to present it. Um, so that's primarily what I'm going to be talking about. But let's, let's talk a little bit about managing your media. And again, I'm just going to briefly cover this, this topic, but I will, whenever I give the demo, kind of walk you through some of, the, some of the stuff that you might do. So, well, let's just talk about what comes out of the box in Drupal 7. Um, surprisingly, Drupal 7 um, core, you go out and download Drupal 7, it by itself has a really good... Um, ability to handle a very specific use case. And I, and I think that that's a good way to put it. It's a, it handles a very specific use case. And that specific use case is if you wish to uh, manage local media, meaning local to your server, on a per entity basis. Meaning you do not wish to share 
that media amongst other nodes. You just want that media to be integrated into that node only or that entity only. Then Drupal 7 is fantastic. In fact, I don't think you should download anything else if that is you. And so as you can see, I have a picture right here where I, oh, and also the, the, the uh, fields to do that in Drupal 7 core, which is just file field and image field. And I'll show you uh, how that works in this, in whenever I demo. But you'll see here on, on the media, I have manage fields and you can see I created a, a media upload field and I also created a, an image upload field. Again, uh, I'm gonna breeze past this. Um, you can uh, watch the demo whenever I actually go through it. I'm gonna explain it a little bit better. And also, just to let you guys know, I am recording this and I'm going to put the video of this presentation on the Drupal project page, the MediaFront project page. So you can always go back to this video and watch it over and over and over again so you get everything. Um, so, but that, you know, the, the Drupal core doesn't handle most use cases. Uh, the, the majority of the use cases that I've come across are people that, that need to manage their media over a CDN, which is a content delivery network. And what these do, they're actually really fascinating. What they do is they're pretty much servers in the cloud and you, you drop your file in this cloud. And depending on where the user watches that video, a, a content delivery network will actually clone that media uh, across multiple servers around the world. And depending on where that user is trying to navigate to your website, the CDN will deliver media that, from the server that's closest to them. So it's actually a great technology. Um, to use. And then I've also seen a lot of people that want to integrate third parties like YouTube and Vimeo. Hey, why not have these, these, these services just provide and stream video for you? They, have, they offer great services and, and for most, most use cases it's free. I think if you want to do commercial stuff it, you do have to pay a little bit for it. But for most use cases it is free. And for this use case there's actually a module for Drupal 7 that I highly recommend and it's called the Media Module. And what this does is it allows, it, it pretty much gives this whole concept of, uh, defines entities for every media type. So you'll have an entity for a video, you'll have an entity for an audio, you'll have an entity for an image. And then what it also includes is a very intuitive media browser that has this concept of a media library. Excuse me, I always hit that microphone. Um, this concept of a media library, and this allows you to share media amongst other content types within your system. It's really fantastic. So let's say you want to upload one video, but then you also want to uh, uh, include that video within another content type. The media module actually just comes built in. And, I'm, and it, uh, again, in the demo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over this. So that, that is the guts and glory as far as like what I would recommend as far as managing media. But we're not here to talk about managing media. The, the big thing that I want to talk about is how do we present media because this is a really big problem that I feel still has not completely been solved. And I'm going to kind of go over the, the issues uh, involved with presenting media. Um, again, I kind of covered earlier on in this presentation that how you decide that you want to present the media is a critical decision that you have to make. And a lot of people, like I said, they, whenever they're building websites, they just breeze over this. They, it's like an afterthought. You know, oh, yeah, we have, to, we have to have some way of actually presenting this media. Yeah, we've got this content. We've got all this back-end stuff managing this media. That's awesome. But whenever they actually get down to how do we want to show this to our users, which is the most important part, they just kind of breeze over it and implement the, the – uh, they usually fall to, like, you know, in, like I said, embedding YouTube, uh, the YouTube player. So here's, here's a big problem. So each browser is different and inconsistent on how they support media. So this, this is like the grassroots of the issues that come with uh, presenting media on the web. And this dates back to way, whenever I actually first started getting into uh, multimedia, which was even before the YouTube days, which is like 2005, is whenever I really started diving into uh, how do I want to manage and how do I want to present media. And back then, each browser just had their own support of media. So like if you, if you were viewing it in Internet Explorer, it would use, you would have to use WNV. And, or if you were using um, you know, Safari, you would have to use uh, a w, uh, MOV. These are, each browser supported their own file types. And then, then came along Flash. And really YouTube was the, I would, I would consider them the, the groundbreakers whenever uh, of using Flash to present multimedia. 
And this was great. You know, Flash actually solved a really hard problem. They, they had this virtual machine that you, you would, was able to, you know, stream video online. You, you would just have to encode it into this special version. And then through Flash, you could actually show it through every single browser. And this was such a big deal that, hey, we have this consistent, finally, we have this consistent way of, of presenting media. Well, we've moved on from Flash. A lot of you are very familiar with, you know, that we have moved on. You know, Steve Jobs is just determined to kill it, uh, which I think he might have succeeded. Um, so, but hey, you know, it's actually a good thing because we moved on and now we have HTML5. And HTML5 was supposed to fix this problem. And I capitalize all caps supposed because I don't think they have fixed this problem. And which is what I'm going to talk about next. So let's talk a little bit about HTML5. How many in here are familiar with the video audio elements that are given in HTML5? We have some people familiar, somewhat, somewhat, that's fine. So with this new standard, in fact, if you go and download a, a modern browser, most of them will come pre-built with this HTML5 ability, where you could, using tags, just like you would use an image tag, in fact, it's, think of it as like an image tag, you would embed a video using a video tag into your web page using, and in fact it has almost the same syntax as image. So you would say video and you would use source, SRC uh, equals and you would give a, a, a link to your video. That sounds awesome, right? Hell, we finally get the standard ability to embed uh, video. Well, there's a big problem. The standard was very well defined on how each browser should implement this. In fact, if you go read the standard, which I have, it's very specific, you know, on all the, how the standard is laid out, the API for the players that, on what you have to implement, but they, they missed a huge thing, which is the codec. They did not standardize the codec. And what a codec is, that's actually a, a combination of uh, encoder decoder, which it's the codec is what allows your browser to encode and basically present that media on, on the, the screen. So a lot of you are familiar with like H.264. You might have seen that in a couple of blog posts. Uh, Flash has FLV format. That's the codec they use, or really the wrappers. There's, there's the MOVs. There's all these different types of codecs. But the problem is, is whenever the W3C committee came together and they said, hey, let's, let's come together on this uh, thing, they, they completely missed out on that. So here's what you get you get inconsistencies. You get each browser implementing a different codec. And so on the x-axis you see the, the codecs, on the y-axis there you see browsers, and anywhere you see a red or a tan, that means you cannot trust it. And what do we know about a technology we can't trust? You just can't, you can't use it. Because you cannot guarantee that all your, all your users are going to use a specific browser. So not only that, but the browsers that do implement it, and you, let's say you do implement it, they all look different. So on the top left here, you have Chrome. On the top right, you have, I think that's Safari. On the bottom left, I think you have, no, uh, I don't even know. So like, yeah, the bottom right is Firefox, and the bottom left is Opera. So you get all these different browsers that are implementing this differently, and what you end up with is a very inconsistent user interface for your users. So as far as I'm concerned, we're kind of back where we started. We're back to where before we had Flash. And so there's people that are still using Flash because of this, because they're like, you know, Flash gives us consistency, and that's what we want. So what I'm coming for today is a possible solution to this problem. And what it is, it's a module that you actually download from Drupal.org, and it's called MediaFront. And my goal for this project is to try and wrap up all of those inconsistencies into a single module. And I consider this a front-end presentation layer for Drupal. That's, that's the best way that I can describe it. It is strictly front-end. I'm not trying to compete with the media module here. That's, you know, that's all back-end management. I am primarily focusing on how do you want to present that, you, that media to your user. So let's just kind of go over a little bit of the high level, high level uh, selling points here. So first thing is, is I completely wrote it in jQuery. Um, so it's JavaScript. It's ran from JavaScript. Uh, it out, has an automatic flash fallbacks for non-supporting browsers. So let's say you want to show media and your, your user doesn't have a browser that supports it. I will literally uh, 
uh, pull out the HTML5 player and swap in a Flash player, um, but just the black part. You know, I don't mm -hmm. even I don't even uh, touch the controls or anything. Just the black part to play play it in Flash, and, and it's really streamlined and works beautifully. I have integration with third parties, so the people that want to stream with YouTube and Vimeo, but want to have that consistent interface, it does that as well. Um, it also integrates with the Views module to deliver dynamic playlists. Uh, it's themable using the Drupal theme system and has a consistent user interface across all browsers. Excuse me. Um, those two links right there are the, the links that you need to go to to come go check it out. So Drupal.org Project Media Front. We also have a website that's specifically just to talk about the project and talk about our goals. And then also, uh, as of two weeks ago, this project was featured on, I don't know if anybody familiar with Twit TV. Yeah. You guys watch Floss Weekly? Yeah. So this, this project was actually uh, featured on Floss Weekly. So it's, it's getting some recognition. So it's, it's definitely getting um, some momentum. So now uh, it's demo time. Okay. I know you're probably saying, okay, that's great. Let me see it. Let me see this thing in action. And what I've actually done, in fact, any time that I've done this, this presentation in the past, I've always had like this demo website that you guys go out and log into and, and, this, and then you can like play in the admin, uh, in the administration. And that, that typically doesn't work really well because the data gets really stale and people that are going to follow this video in the future are going to want something that they can build on their own. So what I actually did is I built um, this demo, this MediaFront demo, and you can go to github.com. Travis T and go to media front demo and all you're going to find there is a make file and so what you have to do is just download this this project and if anybody you guys are familiar with with drush make all you have to do is type drush make media front demo and then voila it's going to build out what I'm about to show you so you can literally go home drush make this and then you will literally be able to walk through this video yourself and I'll, and I'll, I'll kind of show you how that works so let's just demo this thing. So uh, like I said, uh, so yeah, so once you actually go out and you do a drush make of that file, and there are instructions on that, so like, I have like a readme file, and if you guys try to follow that as much as you can, you, you should have a readme. But once you're actually done, you're, gonna, you're not going to see the content, but you're going to see it as a blank page. But what the, the underlining infrastructure is going to be there. So you could actually, after you could that, you could go to add content, and you will see this media type. And you could just start uploading uh, media. Um, like you can give like, you know, sample media. You can give it an image. This right here is the media module stuff, which I'll, I'll kind of go over here in a little bit. But then you actually save and you get, you get something that looks like this. And I know a lot of people, I also get this question, like where do you get your media? And I, I love movie trailers because they're just freely available. You can go out and you can download them. Go to trailers.apple. Don't do this now because you'll bring down the server. Uh, trailers. Uh, it would be nice if I could spell. That's not not tailors. No, that'd be funny. It's a bunch of people making clothes. Um, so you can go to any one of these, and you can click on it, and you can in, on the view trailers. If you actually click on this little arrow right here, you'll see that you can download this. Okay. So this is a great way that you can actually test this out, and you can get some images to like to put up there. So if you guys can go out there and play with it, but this is going to be an H.264 format. And so what I'd like to uh, also talk about just very briefly, let's say you want to test other media types. Well, you go out and you download this something called the Miro Video Converter, which is the easiest to use uh, converter that I've seen. It's all open source. And you just drag and drop that trailer in here, and then you can, you can make it go to WebM, um, Theora. These two right here, Theora and WebM. So Theora is the AUG. AUG v, uh, it's AUG V video. But then there's also WebM. So you can convert it to any format to do any testing that you want. So that's where I got my media. And once you do that, you start populating the media and you end up with this. Okay. So this is what I consider before. So this is, let's say you have the media capabilities built in. I'm using file field. I'm using the media module. I've got all this back end stuff ready, but you'll see that I don't have much presentation layer here. In fact, if I click on this guy, it takes me, this is what you get out of the box. You don't get any players out of Drupal. You get maybe a file download where you can look at it. You can maybe see the image. I mean, which is pretty. It's nice, but there's no media. So what, what's the typical thing that people are going to want to expect on this page? They're going to want to see what? A media player, right? They're going to want to click on one of those and actually see a media player. So let me walk you through the process of setting that up. Um, and all of this is built into the MediaFront module. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is click on structure here 
and you're going to go to MediaFront presets. Now, everything in MediaFront is kind of driven from this preset concept, and, and I kind of got this or stole it, I, whatever you want to put it, from image cache. You know how like you could create presets for your image cache. Everyone's familiar with image cache, right? Um, and you could create presets, and how do you want to size it? How do you want it to look? And, and that concept really works well whenever you're trying to present media. And what I did is I was like, well, why can't we use that same concept to build media players, um, to build media presentations. So you're going to go to media front presets and this will list off and obviously I haven't added any yet. So the first thing you're going to do is go click add preset. And so what are we trying to do? We are wanting to show a player on the media nodes. So the first thing you're going to say is, okay, I want my preset name. I'm going to just call this the node player. Okay, so this is the player within the node. And one awesome thing about this module is it comes pre-built with the Open Standard Media Player, which is a media player that I wrote specifically for Drupal. And you don't have to go out and download any third-party libraries. There's no licensing issues because everything that I'm presenting to you is GPL. So I'm able to just wrap it all up into a single download. You go download MediaFront, zero dependencies. You don't have to go download any libraries. You just download the module and you're, you're done. So then you click Next. The next page that you're going to see is just kind of like a boilerplate media player. So this is like the default settings that you might see. So as you can see, uh, it, it comes suggesting to you that, there has me, uh, uh, that it has playlist capabilities, which I'll go over in a little bit. <clears throat> but because we want to build just a node player, we don't want to see this playlist. You know, we might even want to uh, make it fit the width of the page. We might even want to change the template. Well, all of this stuff is configured just down here in the preset settings. Um, you can kind of sk skip over the preset information. We don't even, I don't even use this anywhere. Where the guts and glory really lies is this player settings. And in here you're going to have presentation settings, media settings, playlist settings, node settings, controller bar, so the control bar. You can do all kinds of stuff with this thing. You can move the logo if you want. You can remove the logo if you want. And then of course other settings. I'm not going to go over all of these settings because I could take the entire presentation just going over what these wants and your eyes are going to glaze over. So what I'm going to do is just go over the specific use cases. In your spare time, if you guys want to go check out what these settings do, play around with it because I give you a live preview. So when you hit save, you're going to see exactly what that modification to that setting is actually doing. So let's just play around just a little bit for here. So the first thing that I want to do um, I kind of like this template, but I want to show off that we have other built-in templates. Uh, the one that, uh, that I really like is this one called Simple Black, which is just a black template. So if I go down and save, you should see that it'll swap that out. And so this is actually a pretty, you know, it's pretty slick. And you can also, um, you can also theme this on the, the Drupal theme layer, which is actually another thing that I want to mention is, yeah, the Dru these themes are really cool, but one big problem that a lot of people had with any other media player is you can't really theme it. You have no control over it. This entire player is built in the Drupal theme system. So it literally has TPL files, PHP TPL files that you can override in your, in your template to do what you want to do. And not to mention it's all CSS and JavaScript driven. All, everything you see here is CSS and it's all stuff that you can override. So let's see, another thing that I might want to do is expand it to fit the width. In fact, I've, I've considered making this a default setting just because I like it so much. So there's something called fluid width that I always enable. So what that will do if you hit save, you'll see it'll expand it out to fit the page. And it just kind of makes it look a little bit nicer and a little bit more uniform. So that's it. That really is it. All I have to do now is connect this to my content type. That's the page or the div, the div that it sits in. This is the preset. So this is this exercise that I'm doing right now is me building the player that I want to show. Yep. So No, it'll actually it'll actually make the video fit. It's not going to warp the video. It'll it'll if the if the video is is three by four, what you'll see is black black on the sides. So I don't I don't modify the or warp the videos. Okay, so the next thing we have to do. So we have our preset. So nothing really happened. Okay, because all we did was build the player. The next task is to link this to our content types, and we're going to do that within structure. So you're going to say go to content types. And then we're going to go to manage fields. Now to get a media player to show up in a content type, excuse me, <coughs> you have to actually add a new field called media player. So what I'm going to do is just call this media player and it's just going to be called field player. And 
then you will see that there is now a special field called media player. And all I'm going to do is hit save. Um, oh, it's going to complain about that, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, because I was testing this before, so I have probably have a lot, a lot of stuff cached. So I'm just going to call it mplayer. You can, the point is you can call this whatever you want to call it. So media player, I'm going to hit save. Here we go. So save field settings. And all you have to do is just go through this. So save field settings. And then here we go. We have our, we have our media player. The next thing that you're going to want to do is go into the display, um, the manage display. And you'll see I have the media player here, but let's say I only want to see the media player. I'm just going to drag these down to be hidden, okay? That's all I'm doing, and then I'm going to set this guy as hidden, the label. So I don't want to see the label. I just want to see the player. And as you can see on this format, I can select presets. So you can build as many presets as you want. You can have as many presets. So you can have like, uh, you can modify the player to look however you want, and then you have that player, and then you just hit save. And so after you hit save, that is it, my friends. This now becomes a media player, okay? And I'm not sure why it's not loading the, there it goes, it loaded the. And so this is, this is pretty cool. That wasn't that hard. There was no programming, nothing involved. We now have a multimedia player. It's got this really cool interface. And as you can see, this is HTML5 because my browser supports it. If I were to play this inside of, um, let me turn it down. Um, if I were to play this inside of like um, IE6, which is like the devil of all uh, browsers, this would work. And the reason why it would work is because all I do, I keep the controls, I keep the buttons, everything that you see here is HTML. All I do is swap out this little black box. I swap it out, throw in another black box flash player that I have JavaScript API. I've built in like this JavaScript API so I use the same APIs to communicate to it so the user doesn't even notice the difference. In fact, it's still HTML. The only difference is I've swapped out this black box media player. So it's actually like a really cool um, little interface. So that's actually just changing your content types, your node types to show media. Let's talk a little bit about playlists. Let's go to that, that home page again. And so a lot of things that I, that I see people want is they want to... Um, yeah, so another thing that I want to mention is when it comes to multimedia, there are a million use cases. And trying to build a media presentation layer to, to encompass all of these use cases was rather really difficult. But I, I'm, I'm going to try and show you the most popular ones. One of them that I, that I get almost all the time is, okay, I've got this really cool grid view that views bills for me. All I want to do is slap a media player on here and have this down here be my playlist. That's cool. You see that a lot, right? Where all of this is still HTML, but you have this playlist, let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new preset. And I'm going to call this just, we'll call this a view player. And there's a special preset that I built just for this, or a special template that I built just for this. So, and that template is called Shock Player. I had a client, uh, and it was Shock of the Arts, and he basically sponsored this. I mean, everything that I do is open source. And so he wanted this functionality, and so I'm, it's now available to anybody who wants it. The flash player skin is what I, if I, if I do have to swap out a flash player, what skin that control bar has if they um, do a full screen. Because <clears throat> flash has full screen capabilities, so you have to show some control bar there because you can't show HTML in full screen. And then, of course, I'm going to check my favorite one, which is fluid width. And then I'm going to hit save, and you will see what this actually comes built with is some little left and right buttons here. I mean, it's, it's really uh, kind of an intuitive little interface. Okay, so now that I've got, my, I've got my preset built, remember, when you build a preset, it doesn't do anything unless you actually add it to something. There's multiple ways to add players here. And the, the way that you're going to do this is you're going to use a block. And MediaFront comes built in with a special block called, guess, Media Player. There it is. Media player, the, the media for module comes built in with this. And I'm just going to add that to my content, okay? So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit save. So on the media player block, in fact, I'm going to move it up here. I'm, I want it to be above, I want it to be above that view. Um, in that media player, if you go here and hit configure, you'll see that I get to, guess what? Pick my preset. We, we uh, have a preset called node player, which we use for the node view. But now I want this different player for the, the, uh, the view that uh, we, you see on the front page. That's called this view, uh, view player. 
And then there's this really cool little thing right here that says link to view. What this does is it will just grab, take whatever player you have and it will just find that view on the page and it just knows what to do. It just links to it. So let's do that. That view is called media. So this is just a view that I built in the admin. And again, if you do a drush make of my project, all of this will be built for you. So you can go into that view and see how I did it. So let's get save block here. And let's see what we end up with. Oh, that's so cool, right? So you get, automatically you get this multimedia capability that just links itself to a view on the page. And typically this is something that would have, caught, that would have a developer would have taken, you know, um, a month, two months to build, right? And like you click on this, it doesn't do any page loads. It just automatically, you know, I basically, uh, um, I, I link, I basically uh, take over the, uh, I take over the, uh, the click and I say, you know what, instead of actually going to the page, I just want you to throw that, that, that uh, up to the player. Then you have like these paginations built onto the player. So they can actually click this next button and it goes to the next video on the page. So it's all just really cool. Okay, so it, I, I literally just added a block to the page and linked it to the view. So really cool. So let's actually talk about another use case. Another use case that I've seen is um, you'll go to a media site. I mean, although this, this one right here I feel, and I just now added this, this feature where you could link it to a view. Pre uh, previously what I've been doing is having the view show within the actual player, which you'll see this a lot too. You'll have a media player and like you'll have like the view at the playlist actually kind of look like it's part of the player. Um, so that's also another thing that I've seen a lot. And so what I'm going to show you how to do is uh, I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page. So I'm going to go and edit my view. So I just click on this little gear here and I go click on edit and this will actually show you what this view looks like. Um, so if you, if you drush make you'll get to see all this yourself. So we have the content type, we have the image upload, that, that actually shows us that teaser. Um, so let's actually build a, um, a new page with a new player. But now that I'm thinking about it, I have no player to show. We have to actually build a preset. So anything you want to do, it has to start with a preset. So let's actually just build a new preset. And this is going to be called, just, I'm just going to call this one player. Okay. And I, I'm just going to kind of use this um, by default. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do something that a lot of people also like to do is like throw the playlist. Just to show you how much how you can configure this thing, I'm going to throw that playlist on the bottom there. So it, the playlist is horizontal and the media player is on top, which I've seen a lot of people want that. So there's actually settings for that. So you go to presentation settings. I want my fluid width because I like it. Um, and then we're going to go to playlist settings. And inside playlist settings, there's something called display settings where you can make the playlist horizontal. And then of course, um, I'll go over the playlist only as well. I'll do that in this tutorial as well. How much time do I have? Okay, we're good. And so you're gonna get something that kind of looks like this, okay? Uh, I wanna make it bigger. I wanna make it taller because I want it to, I want it, they, when, because I made the horizontal playlist, it's kind of squished. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is 600. I'm gonna hit save. Yeah, that looks pretty cool, right? You, know, you get the whole widescreen and you're going to get this little playlist on the bottom. So now that I have my preset, I'm going to go to my view. And what I'm going to do in the view is I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to say new page. Okay. We need to provide a path. Where's the path? And I'm going to say media 2. I know that's kind of lame, but I can't think of anything better. And so the way that this works within a view is the media front module in addition to having the whole definable blocks is it presents a style within a view so let's say you have your view and it's showing all these media well there's a whole concept in styles and views is everyone familiar with how styles work you can have like the grid style you can have a table style where you're basically presenting that view in a different way well, that's the way that this works. You're going to present this player, or that view, as a media player. And so you're going to actually use this whole format. Well, they call it format in the new views. In the old views, they called it style. So right now, it's in grid view. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I am going to click on this, and you'll see that there is now a media player format. 
And I'm just going to say format and I only want it for this page. I don't want to change my grid view to be that. And so I'm just going to hit apply. And then look here. Hey, we get our media front presets. And what player, I, this was the one that I want. I want that, that preset. And that's it. So what I've done is I've set up a view to be displayed as a media player. That's really how simple it should be. You know, you shouldn't have to go through all this trouble of building your playlist. And if you really think about it, how powerful is views? You can filter views. You can, you can filter views based on users. Like each user can have their own view. Well, if you use this concept, each user can have their own video playlist. So on their, on their profile page, you can have their favorites. You know? So you can have like this video website, and the each user can go click, and I like this one, I like this one, I like this one. And you can actually build that out in a view on their profile to show that media. If you present it as a media player, you suddenly have this player that shows a playlist of all the videos that that user likes. So by combining this front-end presentation layer, with the power of views, you actually get a lot of power at your fingertips. It's really cool. At least I think it's cool. Obviously, I think it's cool because this is what I do. I'm obsessed with, right? So let's go ahead and save that. And we haven't changed this. There is going to be one problem. And before I go to Media 2, I know this guy's going to show up because I didn't, I didn't tell him to not show up um, on that page. And so I'm going, to go, I'm going to go edit that view real quick, or the block. And I'm going to say configure, and we only want to show him on Media. I'm editing that block so, he, so we don't have two. You can have two media players on the same page, which I'll do, I'll do here in a little bit, but I just don't want that clutter. Um, so, so now he's only showing on media. Let's actually go to media two, which is the path that I said, and oh, check that out. That looks cool. Okay, And this actually has like this really cool just like user interface, so it will slide over, and it's very flashy. You know, It's got that flash feel to it. But this is all jQuery. This is all JavaScript. It's, it's built. The underlying technology here is JavaScript. But I tried my best to make it look, because everyone loves that flash look. And especially with multimedia, they just, it just feels better. And so what I've tried to do is I've tried to incorporate a lot of the flash stuff. So you get this really cool uh, presentation layer of multimedia by just displaying a certain view in a different way. It's really powerful. Okay, so that's another use case. One other use case that I've also run into is a lot of people, they say, okay, I like this playlist, right? I like this player, but I don't like them together. I want to get this guy, and I want to pull him over into this sidebar, and I want him to control another player that's on the, on the middle of the page. So I've actually gotten that before, where, where people want like other players to, they want two play, these two players to communicate. And this actually is built into the media front module as well. So I've, I've built into this concept, I built in this concept of connecting players together. And with the presets, and so I'm actually going to go build a, I'm going to go build a playlist only preset. And so, um, and a lot of people don't realize that the media front module could be used for this. Um, it's actually a really good carousel module. Like if you just want to show a carousel of images and you don't want to have anything to do with media, it's got a really elegant uh, carousel. Um, and I'll show you how you do that. You just say add preset. Um, we're just going to call this playlist. And you're going to say next. And the setting that I'm going to choose is called, you're going to go down to player settings. You're going to go to display uh, playlist settings. And you are going to say, I want to see playlist only. And that's it. And then you suddenly have this playlist only. And this is going to be like, and you can also make it horizontal. So you can have like these really cool carousels. And the by default, um, this default player uses what's called the theme roller, jQuery theme roller. And jQuery theme roller comes with these pre-built templates. So you can go to, if you don't like the way this one looks, which I mean, I, I think it looks pretty cool, but you know, you guys might not have the same taste as me. If you guys are like, well, I'd like a different theme roller theme, you can go to, uh, oh, what is it, theme roller. I'm just going to go to themeroller.com. And, yep. And you can go and download these galleries of like these different templates. Um, so if, if you want your player to look like that, or let's say you want your player to look like that, um, there's all these different kinds of templates that you can download for free. What's cool about this jQuery theme roller is the media front, the OSM player that I built, or the default template, is theme roller capable. Which means you can go download, you can go and download one of those theme rollers drag and drop it to the uh, a directory. In fact, right here it kind of explains, if you guys just read this, it will explain how that works. 
And what you end up with is all these different type of theme roller themes that you can use. So a real popular one that I've seen people use is the smoothness, which is like a, it's like a white. I'll probably have to refresh this because it's going to cache it. Um, it's like this white um, player. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, you know, just like a, a hint, you know, and you'll see like some media fall over there. In fact, I'll just, I'll just keep that. I'll keep that, that, that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw that inside of a block. So now you're saying, okay, how do I, how do I do that? How do I, okay, so now I've got that preset and this is where the big disconnect comes from. A lot of people who use this module, they have a hard time connecting the presets to how do I actually display that preset? Well, it's all driven with views. A lot of it's driven with views. So what I'm going to do is go and I'm going to edit this view again. And what I'm going to do, instead of adding a page, I'm going to add a block. And now the block, and this, remember this is the same media view. I'm going off that same view here. And so in this block, I'm going to call this media playlist. Playlist. I'm going to hit apply. And in the same way that I could change the style of the page, I can change the style of this block. I'm going to want to make it a media player. And I'm going to say this block only. I'm going to apply. And then here are my presets again. And what do we call it? We wanted it to be playlist. <clears throat> That's it. I'm going to save. Once I do that, you will see, <coughs> you will see that views has added that view or that block to my block section. Uh, media playlist. There it is. And I want to throw that over in the left-hand region. And because I used views to display it, it's already going to be connected to the media. You don't have to do any like any RSS stuff to try and feed like some type of feed to it. Like there's a lot of uh, players out there where you have to like feed it with like an XML file, and then you have to find out okay, how do I deliver an XML file in Drupal? Everything is dru uh, views driven. So I'm going to throw this over in my first sidebar, and I want to configure this to only show up. Where'd it go? It's right here. I only want this to show up on my media type. So now I love, I love this new feature of Drupal 7. You can now say I want it to only show with this content type. So I only want it to show up on media content types. Okay, so here we go, that's it. Now what you're gonna see, and I already know what this is gonna do, but I want just, just to try and illustrate this, I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. So as you can see, here's my playlist over here. But it doesn't quite connect. I click on this and it doesn't do anything. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because we have not connected them together. In the, in, the, uh, in the preset, there's a way that you connect them together. And you do that. So I'm going to go back to the media front presets. I'm going to go back to my playlist. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go down here. And there's this little thing called player to player, which will allow you to say, make this preset the playlist for. And what's the, what's the, what's the preset that we have in that, the uh, content type? Well, I think we call it node player, right? And if you hit save, now they are connected. There it is. And I, so now I've got this little playlist that's over on the side. And it, it basically behaves as if it's connected directly to that media player. And as you can see, I'm mixing and matching, maxing, uh, mixing and matching presets with different themes and different templates. You can do that. So you can... Uh, if, if this, if this uh, template doesn't have a playlist, you can just slap one right next to it and nobody will know the difference. It, you can connect them together that way. In the same way, you can also connect a control bar. So let's say you just want to do audio only and you just want to have like this little control bar at the very bottom and all that control bar does is play audio. You can, in your preset, define, I only want this preset to be controller only. But then you can connect that to a player that's on the opposite side of the page. So we have this whole concept of connecting players together. So just some really cool stuff. Um, before I, before I, I end up, I also want to touch a little bit on this third party stuff because I really feel like this is also a really big exciting piece of the MediaFront module is its ability to feed in third party uh, vendors. And in fact, it feeds it in through the same interface. And so all you have to do is download the media module and then you set it up <coughs> Excuse me. You download. There's a media YouTube plugin, and then there's a media Vimeo plugin, and that's all I did. So if you drush make that that project at the beginning, you will get all of those pre-built, pre-compiled for you. So all I have to do is just go to add content. I'm going to add media, and let's see here. I'm going to go select media. 
So here's that media library. There's this media uh, browser that the media module gives you, which is really cool. But one thing that they allow you to do is just go to the web. So what I'm going to do is just go over here. I like Vimeo the best, so I'm going to go to Vimeo, and we're just going to pick. I'm just going to pick this one. Get real, get right. I, I don't know. It's probably like this bad, horrible video, but it's the first one I saw. So I'm just going to click that. You hit submit. And as you can see, it automatically brought in the thumbnail. So this is really cool about the media module. It just like, it goes out and it downloads the thumbnail. Everything works. So what is this called? It's called Get Real, Get Right. And you can see I'm using the same interface to, to upload my media. I mean, it's like, it's all the same. I could, I could use just the media module. I, you don't have to use file fields. You could use just the media module and it'll integrate just as easily. Again, all I've done with MediaFront is added a presentation layer. I haven't done really anything. In fact, I don't care about the back end. All I care about is, is streamlining the presentation of that. And then once you hit save, you'll see, oh, look at that. It looks like your site's media player. In fact, it's playing and it's streaming this through the same interface. And I know you're saying, wait a minute, why, why don't I see the Vimeo player here? The reason is, the reason why you don't see the Vimeo player here, I mean, you kind of see it there in the background, but I'm, 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 you're, all these controls work, and this is the same controls. The reason is, is because Vimeo um, offers what they call an API player. And what that is, is they've, they've issued these libraries that allow you to literally embed their player as a black box, and using JavaScript, you can control it. You can load whatever videos you want into it. And so I've taken advantage of that by basically wrapping my MediaFront presentation around it and just using their black box. And so that way, you, it doesn't matter. You can have Vimeo, you can have local files, you can be on CDN. It doesn't matter where they come from. They're all channeled through the same interface. And so it's, that's actually kind of a cool video, right? Um, it's really kind of weird though, right? Wow, that's like really weird. Okay, I had no idea what it was before I uh, embedded it. But anyway, you guys get the picture. And the same goes for YouTube. Let's, let's try YouTube. This is fun, right? I'm just going to go to YouTube. Right now, I'm, I'm currently building support for other, um, for other providers. There's one that I really like called OK Go on treadmills. <clears throat> Where is it? Um... Oh, it's right here. Yeah, it's like right in front of me. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. Yeah, and you have those annoying advertisements, right? Well, hey, let's skip over those advertisements by just using their API player. So I'm going to add content. I'm going to say select media, web, YouTube. There it is. It almost seems like cheating, doesn't it? Like you're like, I mean, it really does. It feels like, my gosh, I'm like taking advantage of it. But that's, they provided that for a reason. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking advantage of it. So there you go. No commercials. You don't have to see any YouTube commercials. You're able to stream this directly to your site. As I mean, you still get the YouTube logo. Of course, you, you, you have to get the YouTube logo. <laughs> I love this video. So anyway... Say what? You get the nag um, pop-up ads. Yep, you do get the, the nagging pop-up ads. That's why I use Vimeo. I like Vimeo a lot better because they don't, they don't have the Until nagging. I do it. Huh? Until I do it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, regardless, uh, your users are, are viewing it through a common user interface. So never again do you, do you have to embed you those, the, that ugly YouTube player in your site. You can download this. It's really easy to configure really easy to set up and you can stream everything through a common interface and that's that's the whole point of this project it's Drupal 6 already <laughs> yeah I've got Drupal 6 support uh, in fact it started with Drupal 6 and I've I upgraded to Drupal 7 so Drupal 6 Drupal 7 yep <laughs> yeah you actually can this player has YouTube support and so, I mean, not YouTube, that was stupid. This, this player has um, XML support, RSS support. 
So what you can do instead of like populating a playlist like the views playlist, you can populate the RSS feed from YouTube and I have a built in parser into this media player where it'll actually parse out all these media from a YouTube channel and like populate this playlist and stream it through that player. So you could, you could like build your own YouTube in a matter of days really. Um, just, just by, ha but it'll it'll be in your own interface. It won't look like the YouTube stuff. Any other questions? I just try to do this kind of this with uh, Vimeo for a client, and the media module is only pulling in. And you can there was no configuration for it. I think it was just Vimeo's API or simple API. It's pulling in just twenty five of the latest instead of pulling in their entire catalog of videos. Oh really? I I don't know about their back end stuff that they do. Um, all I know is the most the popular ones that I always try are what usually always there. Yeah. So, any other uh, any other questions? Um, so that was the demo. Again, go there if you guys want to reproduce what I did. I'm rec I just recorded this entire video, and so tomorrow what I'm going to try to do is on the project page on the Drupal project page of MediaFront. I want to try, I'm going to probably put a link of this demonstration up there so you guys can go home and just pause it and try and walk through it to the best of your ability. Um, so, and we've already said no questions. That's fine. So anyway, also, if, if anybody needs like any help with this, um, we do offer support. Um, so like if you need customizations or whatever, um, you can just come to me. You can find me in the uh, uh, Drupal. You can go to my username, contact me that way, or just go to Alethe Inc. And, and that's, that's that. Uh, yeah, and I, w I mean, I wish, yeah, uh, we have like five minutes, but I really wish I could have shown audio because it's all the same, and you can, you can actually play an MP3 through this player, just like you can video anything. I mean, so you can, you can upload an MP3, upload a, uh, a uh, album art that you want that to show, and it'll play that MP3 with that album art, and you can do all the all kinds of cool stuff with it. Yep. Will it do SWS? Yes. Um, it, it did as of like six months ago, but I, I, I'm willing to bet it's broken by now because I haven't tested it. But yeah, at one point I had SWS working. So, but anybody else? Thanks a bunch. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's freaking awesome, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. As, as you can. Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, my you know my wife considers it an unhealthy obsession, but I mean, hey, it's it's what I, I love, and I, in the evenings, I'm I'm like one of those stay up until one o'clock in the evening, just you know working on this stuff, just because I love it. And I, I everything I do, even for clients, I always contribute back to the community. In fact, I won't take a job where I can't. So, and just know that that's that's kind of the the motto I live by. So, expect to see a lot of great things come out of this project because I I'm I'm really dedicated to it. So. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll just go ahead and play the rest of this.